Good morning, everyone, inside, outside, and online, and welcome to worship at Mount Zion Lutheran Church in Boiling Springs, but actually the historic hamlet of Churchtown uh, outside Boiling Springs. We begin our service with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Let us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the people of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love. Empower our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this first or for the Sunday of Pentecost is from chapter two of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under the heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Why are not all these people speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamanites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in their own language we hear them speaking about God's deed and power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And the last day it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
and I will show portents of the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The first reading. The second reading is from the eighth chapter of Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Here ends the second reading. Our gospel this morning is from the 14th chapter of John, verses 8 through 17. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. Here ends the gospel reading. I wonder if there's anyone that wants to come up for a children's message. Anyone to bring your pinwheels? Yeah. Come on up. Remember, I don't bite. So glad to see you this morning. I promised you, you can put your, your pinwheel in front of the fan. You want to do that? Oh, You want to put yours? Just hold it up like this. Yeah. <laughs> She's laughing. You can't hear him laughing. And anytime during, before, and it's not before, during or after the service, you can play with that. But why do you think um, pinwheels are fun? Why do you, you know, I'm so glad you brought them, but why, why do you think I'm asking you to put pinwheels in front of the fan? This is a hard question. What is the fan like? What is it like out in nature? What is the fan like? The wind. You think it's like the wind? And today in our scripture lesson, we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you heard that? And it came to the people like the wind. And it's really hard for us sometimes to say, what is the Holy Spirit? But for right now, we're going to say when we feel the wind, see the wind, it's the Holy Spirit all around us. Who's going to help us and guide us and be our friend. So you remember that, okay? <clears throat> The Holy Spirit's our friend. All right, ready for a prayer? Let's watch the cord. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And every time we see the wind or feel the wind, we are reminded of this great gift that you've given to us, who will be with us and help us through anything. We pray this in your holy name. Can you say amen with me? Amen. Thanks for coming up. <laughs> you can, it's up to your dad, but you can stay there as long as you want to. I think I would have a hard time leaving. Today, we celebrate, that's okay, it's up to you, Dad. Today, we celebrate Pentecost, as I was telling the girls. It's exactly 50 days after Easter. So that's why the Penta is part of the cost. So Penta means 50. And we rejoice in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's a festive day in the church when we use a lot of the color red. Have you noticed? <laughs> we got it in the flowers and draping the cross and I decided to bring out my stole and the pinwheels. What else do we got? So a little bit of a pyramid and Rick's wearing red for all of us. This is pretend red. Oh, Julie's pretending to wear red. I see Roxanne's wearing red. You don't have to wear red, but some people do. And um, so through all of that, we are reminded of how the Holy Spirit of God came down as tongues of fire. But it's much more than just a special day in the church calendar or using a lot of the color red. What's important about this day of Pentecost is the promised gift of the Holy Spirit by Jesus. Poured out on the disciples and made them children of God, joined heirs with Christ, leaving no one out. We hear in the reading from Acts that the Holy Spirit came so fantastically that suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Surrounded by signs of fire, wind, and a variety of languages, in their midst. The people were amazed and astonished at Jesus' promise coming true. For those gathered inside the house, that event meant the birth of a sudden and surprising gift of new life. Filled with the Holy Spirit, they burst from the house with a story to share about God's wonders. And the gospel gives us clarification of this Holy Spirit. There's no wind, there's, there's no fire, only Jesus. And he's still giving his farewell words to his disciples. And he tells them there'll be another who will take his place. And he refers to it as the advocate. Now that divine title of advocate is how we translate it out how the NRSV translates it to be uh, advocate. But the Greek word paraclete means someone who will stand by another. And I think that's kind of easier for us to uh, grasp onto and remember. Jesus has not gone away, but he's here with us by our side. And perhaps that's all we need to know that the Holy Spirit is abiding in and among us and will speak to each of us no matter our origins, our languages, or our path in life. But what does this event of Pentecost mean for us today, many, many centuries later? First, it's not a one-time gift given to the first century disciples. God is at work here and now in the world because the Holy Spirit is given to each of us in our baptism. At the font, we ask God to send the Spirit into the water and into the candidates for baptism. And through this gift to us, Jesus' advocate or friend or partner is walking alongside of us to share the truth, to guide us to comfort us, to help us, 
and I think most importantly, to help us continue the work and sometimes do even greater works, Jesus says, and continue Jesus' ministry. It also means that as Christ's followers, we really have all that we need. Yeah, our future may seem uncertain at times, but we can count on the Holy Spirit to be by our side, guiding us forward on the path that Jesus has laid out in front of us. That means we trust our future to God, and we can look at hope beyond this pandemic while also faithfully tending to the realities and the unique challenges right in front of us. If our minds and hearts are open, God will provide a vision, a different view of the world, and we will see what God sees. Granted, this vision or this path is sometimes hard to accept, especially when we don't feel like everyone agrees with it, when we feel like God is hidden, or when we're tempted just to give up and give in. But in those instances, we need to hold firmly to our belief that God is not finished revealing who Jesus is, and we are not done yet finishing learning. You see, the Holy Spirit is extremely interested in us, and this advocate will teach us everything we need to know. I thought back since last night was uh, the first time we were offering the community dinner in, since the pandemic began. I thought I'd look back and think back about the time when we were having second Sunday dinners after the church service on the second Sunday. And that was nice, it was nice fellowship. But um, I had an epiphany, like why don't we take, why are we only feeding ourselves, why don't we feed our community at a monthly, monthly dinner? Well, when I proposed this, there wasn't fire and pitchforks, but <laughs> I was kind of told in so many words that well, that really can't be done because we wouldn't know how many people would be showing up. But when the Holy Spirit wants to make things happen, it will weave people and things together to make a vision a reality. And the result for us at Mount Zion was a new opportunity to do Jesus' work. It was realized, and it still is, after how many years soon? Six, seven, something like that? And the next thing I knew, Rick and Sue were volunteering to organize, cook, and serve dinners. Thank you guys, and a lot of you for helping too. One way of recognizing in hindsight of the power and the urgency of the Holy Spirit in our lives is kind of to reflect sometimes and look back. And um, I decided also to share with you about looking back at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, we were locked down, right? The, but the Holy Spirit was not locked down. It just kept coming as a whirlwind of sudden shifts of behaviors at work and school and of course in the church. Those were very difficult day for churches. And we were challenged to think differently in terms of virtual space and relationships in the midst of a crisis. It wasn't easy, and it was information overload. None of us knew what Zoom was, <laughs> but I found a copy and downloaded it, and that's how we had our first emergency council meeting. I had never done a Facebook Live worship service, and definitely not one for my own. And I don't play an instrument. I was wondering how music was gonna happen, but Kelsey and Kyle, who are musically inclined, worked with me to make a service happen over the internet, and we never missed a Sunday. We've come a long way, and that's because the Holy Spirit continues to work with us, just like the idea of a parking lot service. 
I talked to Rick and we both were sharing notes on it. I think we saw it on TV or read it uh, in the newspapers. And Rick said, that's great. Let's go get an FM transmitter. But <laughs> there was none to be found on Rick, right? They were made uh, overseas and uh, everyone else had the same idea and, and bought them all. Um, so we almost gave up. But then Rick was nudged by the Holy Spirit to contact a friend and kind of shared with him, like, oh, we can't get a, we can't get an FM transmitter. And he said, oh, I have a kit, right, Rick? And you can have it if you build it. <laughs> and who can build an FM transmitter from a kit? Yeah. Rick. Thank you, Rick. And that's how we got the parking lot service and everything else. Thank you, Rick. You know, sometimes we're forced to rely on the Holy Spirit when there's no manual and we've never done things before. And the Holy Spirit helps us. And we can see those creative juices working. They aren't our juices. They are opportunities, creativity, uh, ideas, epiphanies that are given to us by the Holy Spirit so that we can experience church in a whole new way. And not just for a pandemic, but lots of other ministries and new ideas. And it helps us spread the word of God. And the Holy Spirit is not done with any of us here. It continues to enter our lives, touch us with tongues of fire, no matter our age, our call as lay or ordained ministers, how much or how little we volunteer in the church, the Holy Spirit will continue to work in all of us to do God's will. We don't know it, but the Holy Spirit always has things up its sleeves, as the expression goes, moving people into action and transcending all sorts of differences and connecting us in ways we never imagined. What all this means is that we need to make time for the Holy Spirit in our lives to pray and then listen for what it has to teach us or help us or empower us in order to serve the Lord with new life so that Christ can be known and glorified. And I'll tell you from experience that we also need to be patient with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> We may feel like we're giving up on the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is not giving up on us. Sometimes the Holy Spirit works so fast that we are overwhelmed how quickly things happen. I think about sharing an epiphany with the evangelism committee about the Peace Garden. And I don't know what the timeline was, but it was very short about having a Peace Garden. They thought it was a good idea. The next day I read a handwritten grant because it was due that day. And I think within a few months, we had a check for $3,000. <laughs> I was just amazed how fast all that went. But that's the Holy Spirit. Other times, we feel like we're in a turtle race with the Holy Spirit. Last summer, I received another epiphany. And it was sparked by a reading of the gospel lesson. I shared it with a few pastor friends. I even shared it with a bishop. Everyone agrees it's a great idea, but it hasn't come to bear fruit yet. I guess the Holy Spirit or I have work to do. But what that means for all of us going forward is to trust in the leading of the Holy Spirit, fast or slow, as long as the Holy Spirit is opening doors we are to walk through them. Thanks be to God today and every day for the Holy Spirit. When we're in pain, it comforts us. When we're unsure, it empowers us. When we're bursting with enthusiasm, it directs us. When we're too comfortable, it stirs us. And when we are called out on our sin, it opens our ears to listen and then repent. This is the power of Pentecost that we celebrate today. 
This is the power of the Holy Spirit that changes our churches and our communities to accomplish God's purposes. Lord, do as you promised. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. We continue our service with the hymn, Spirit of Gentleness, and we'll sing all four, four verses.
Let's continue our service by confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy moving one, first open our locked doors, and by your Spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the Advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the world work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering especially those that we now name aloud our, or in our hearts. <clears throat> Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your Spirit, bind us together with all the spirits who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. It's uh, time to locate your holy communion kit. If you still need one, they're on the back table. If you're outside, you can get them from one of the worship folks. And we'll begin with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks for grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the house of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. At this time, if you are able, you can lift your communion kit for a blessing. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, bless and enter into this bread and juice, so that we may be strengthened and empowered by you to reach out, to witness, to walk and to share your love, 
in our lives of service to others. All glory and honor is yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God invites you to this table of bounty. Thanks be to God. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is given and shed for you. You can consume it now during this communion hymn of meditation or when you get home. Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our last hymn for the day is O Day Full of Grace. It's in your bulletin. And we'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5. Now go in peace, alone serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 